I've come a really long way for someone who's from a bumble town in Pennsylvania. I'm known as a plus size model. I'm a trans advocate, work an executive level job. I haven't gotten where I've gotten by not being so honest. I've gotten where I've gotten by being as genuine as possible. I wasn't always the nicest trans woman, like I like within my own community. A lot of times I judged people who weren't passable or I judged people who didn't fit into the gender classifications. And not because I didn't like them as people, but just because I didn't understand what they were going through. I couldn't relate to how my cross-dresser friend could feel comfortable in women's clothing and then go out as a man. For me, being as a man felt so inherently uncomfortable. Like, oh, you're not trans. You almost, you diminish people. You're like, I'm worth more than you are because I'm passable. That's worthless. The makeup and the hair and and the outfits, that's not what it means to be a woman. Those are men's ideals of what it means to be a woman, not women. The main reason a trans woman puts themselves to that, one, if they enjoy it, or two, for safety. Like you're keeping yourself safe from society seeing who you are. When I transitioned from male to female, I started with a basis of drag. Drag kind of gave me an opportunity to get to know myself on a level where I didn't before. I would say I grew up as a sheltered, heavyset white kid in Northeast Pennsylvania with drunken parents who were like slightly abusive. I didn't think I'd feel powerful as a woman. When I put on drag for the first time, I was like, oh my God, like I don't feel like I normally feel. I don't hate myself in this. I don't hate what I see in the mirror. I don't hate the person looking back at me. I just came to this point where I was like, I need to do me. And part of doing you, I've found, is seeing parts of yourself that people don't like. Part of that was letting go of all of the costuming of what femininity is. Women, cisgender women, fall into that same pit. I think they, they fall into the, I need to be like every other woman. I need to have her breasts, her hair, her butt, her nose, her legs, and I don't want to look like myself. At the end of the day, I'm still trans. At the end of the day, I'm still fat. There's no in-betweens about that. It's like they want a specific look in all industries, really, even my own in fashion. They want a look. They want a certain presentation. You put me with a bunch of cisgender women, and all of a sudden, that's a big bitch. I don't think that trans people get to see enough people who don't look perfect. We're so invested in perfect trans imagery. You have to be the perfect form of a woman or a man. It's like, they should be able to kind of live and breathe within their own aesthetic and not have to conform to whatever we want to make them. I think seeing strong people who represent our community in a fashion that is invested in something more than the clothing we're wearing is so valuable. Like, the extras, that's not what makes you trans. If I were to see myself now as my younger like self, if I were to see who I was going to be, I don't know if I'd believe that that was going to be me. At 12, I thought that I was going to be dead by 18. And at 22, I thought I was going to be dead by 30. There's a sensibility that I didn't think I'd exist further to reach where I am. I would cherish the thought that like most of my traumas didn't define my existence, but were more a decoration on its very journey. I wouldn't be able to imagine the life that I have now then, and seeing myself would have given me a reason to want to keep going, I think. Visible is the new way to think about phone service. Just 40 bucks a month, all in for unlimited messages, minutes, and data at speeds of up to five megabits per second. All on Verizon's 4G LTE network. No hidden fees, no annual contracts. When you think the future of phone service, think Visible. Visible.